expecting a lot more gaps in the, uh, in the audience. So the professionalism of the ACTS uh, members is extremely high, I have to say. Um, what I want to do, I'm not going to say very much. I just want to give you a few reflections from my point of view in the morning uh, and then introduce the, the, the main speaker in the afternoon, uh, Chris, who's the one that you're, you're actually here to, to see. But um, it's interesting, there are a current theme uh, in, the, in the morning session, um, and it's become a recurrent theme across the world, is you can't have high quality education if you don't have high quality teachers. It's become a no brainer in terms of, of policy and expectations about how you raise quality in, uh, in education. But if you look across the world, there are very different answers to what is a high quality teacher and how do you encourage more teachers to be high quality and high quality people to come into the profession. And there's nowhere more stark than the contrast between Scotland and England in terms of that view. Very different views about the nature of teacher professionalism, what it means to be a professional teacher in the 21st uh, uh, century. And the agenda that we're following, which is actually very much in line with the kind of things that are emerging in, in countries across the world, apart from England and one or two others, um, but is strongly backed by evidence from the, uh, the OECD and the stuff that uh, Andrea Sleicher and OECD has been talking about, would give us some reinforcement that if we can make this work, if we can see this through, uh, we're doing the right thing that is likely to lead to dramatic improvements in terms of the learning of our young people, which is, of course, uh, what it's all about. So I suppose the first reflection in the morning is uh, I'm extremely encouraged by the extent to which the very evident commitment of everyone who's spoken to you in the workshop that uh, some of the I attended, uh, but also the, the, the nature of the fact you all are back this afternoon is all part of this um, critical process of it's all very well to know what you should do, but actually making it happen, actually seeing this through is going to be um, a big challenge uh, for us all, both from the point of view of politicians at a policy level, but also particularly for the profession it's itself. So the focus on teachers, I think, is absolutely uh, right. Uh, I thought, uh, sparing his blushes, of course, Ken, I thought Ken this morning um, uh, absolutely captured the agenda, as you would expect. Uh, and I, I think that it is interesting, uh, to w it'll be interesting to watch over the course of the next uh, few years, uh, the role of the General Teaching Council uh, in this agenda, because I think what we're critically seeing is a view of, a, of the General Teaching Council as a regulator, important, vitally important as it is, but as also as a leader in terms of helping to take forward this agenda of teacher quality in, in Scotland. So I think a lot of the things that, that uh, Ken was saying are absolutely central, I think, to how we're going to bring things forward. I think the new sets of standards uh, give us all reference points, both the, the uh, standard for registration, but particularly the standard for career-long learning, give us reference points which are very important. I think the um, emerging approach to the link between PRD and uh, uh, professional update is very important. We need to get that right and there's still work to be done there to make, those two, make sure those two are uh, in sync with each other. But running through what uh, Ken said was an emphasis on pedagogy, an emphasis on our learning, all of us, in terms who are involved in, in, in education, our learning about how to improve what we currently uh, do. And the other word to use is flexibility. And I think that's maybe going to be one of the bigger challenges for us at the end of the day. Because in order to move forward, it may be that things that we may regard as, as uh, hard won elements of, of, of how we currently do things, actually we're going to have to ask some hard questions. Uh, as, the, as the nature, the context within which we, we do our work changes, as the nature of the, of the context in which our children are leading their lives changes, we're maybe going to have to ask ourselves some quite hard questions uh, about just how flexible we can be. And flexibility not responsively, not saying, oh, well, we better, but flexibility because the profession is saying we need to do this in order to serve our children better. So that word flexibility, I thought, was, was important. Um, uh, Petra, I thought, um, struck a very nice note, very nice note in the, in the morning because her personal story made her personal commitment very obvious. Uh, she believes, she's not doing this because a minister asked her to chair a group. She's doing this because she believes in the agenda that we're talking about and believes it because it reflects part of her own life history. And she took that through, I thought, very well. And uh, seeing her as chair of, of the National Implementation Board, she's also very impressive, as you would, not, as you would imagine from seeing her there, very impressive in that, uh, in that role and very good at keeping, uh, herding those cats, you know, keeping all of those uh, different groups uh, 
broadly going in the same, the same direction. The range of workshops, I've only got to one, the one on, on uh, uh, transition, and I thought that was a super workshop. Uh, uh, the, the, the challenging, one of the most challenging things that we face is to take those young people from very troubled backgrounds and try to do what we can in the context of, of a school to make sure that those young people uh, move forward, build their confidence, and, and thrive in the context of, of uh, secondary education and beyond. And the work that we heard about in, in Eastern Bartonshire is a very good example of, of, a, of a very strong commitment uh, to serving young people, those troubled young people, as well as possible. So the morning session, I thought, um, for me, um, said an awful lot of important things. And I just noted some words that, that uh, I think came through consistently in that morning session. There's an emphasis on growth. There's the emphasis that all of us as professionals need to grow throughout our careers. Wherever we are in that, in that uh, career span, we need to be constantly seeing how we can improve, how we can grow, how we can make ourselves more able to respond uh, to the young people. Reflection and inquiry come through very strongly because that's how you grow, is by reflecting, is by uh, uh, examining what you currently do and trying to see ways in which you can move forward. Emphasis on partnership and collegiality, and I think that's one of the hallmarks of the way we're doing things in Scotland. Um, what we're not doing is creating a workforce of individuals um, that are, could be very good at their job as individuals. What we're trying to do is to say that the, the whole is, is greater than the sum of the parts, that actually by working in partnership uh, and collegially together in all sorts of contexts, we actually create something that is much stronger than by having a lot of individuals that are, are uh, doing, good job, doing a good job on their own but they would be even stronger if they were working with colleagues in that kind of collegiate role. And that collegiality and partnership was about universities coming into the fold, if you like, because the universities in Scotland, and Scotland not alone, have tended to uh, be marginalised in terms of the role in at least to te initial teacher education, but the role beyond that had been very limited. What I would hope to see in the course of, of uh, the next few years is that the universities are making a much, much stronger contribution to the whole career-long learning growth and the kind of vision that Ken talked about in terms of looking 5, 10, 15 years ahead, I think universities have a big part to play in that. Leadership, what it's all about uh, in terms of, of today, and having a sophisticated understanding of what it means, what leadership means in the professional context of a school. Leadership, you know, sometimes the, the, uh, the messages we get in, in, in schools is that um, the answers to leadership lie in the, the private sector. They lie in, in, in people who are running successful companies. Well, of course, there are things you can learn from that. But actually, it's a heck of a lot more difficult uh, to run a school with all the complexity that's there, than be partly because you don't know what the bottom line is at the end. People disagree about what is success in relation to a school. In business, it's a bottom line. It's profit. You either make a profit or you don't. And you know that, that all your efforts have got to be geared towards that. In the context of a school, it's a much more sophisticated, complex process. So those people who, can, who are, are operating uh, in leadership roles in schools are doing a superb job if, if, if the school is, is working well. But of course, as, as, as uh, uh, both Ken and Petra said, leadership is about everyone. Uh, leadership is a state of mind, if you like, rather than a role. You've got to think about everyone in a school seeing themselves as being part of taking that uh, school forward. And finally, I think this group and ACTS is, it's going to be interesting for me to see where you go in the course of the next uh, uh, few years. Uh, it would be a huge pity uh, and a huge loss to Scottish education if the collective uh, experience and professionalism, which is present in this room and beyond in terms of, of all that we've got from the Chartered Teacher Programme just now, did not contribute to that, that future. So my personal hope is that the kind of agenda which is building out from, chart, from the Chartered Teacher exercise is uh, bringing more people into to being involved uh, in uh, this organisation uh, and this organisation becoming one of the key players in terms of driving forward that professional growth agenda. And I very much hope that as you're discussing this today and, and beyond, uh, that, that, that you'll want that to happen. You'll want that to be something which places acts at the, acts at the centre of that uh, future uh, agenda. This afternoon, I'm going to introduce Chris in a second. Uh, we've again got a whole range of, of, uh, of workshops which address different professional uh, issues, a very, very uh, rich uh, menu. Uh, and we're going to lead into that through Chris. Um, the first law of leadership is choose who you work with. 
It's the first law of leadership. Good people working with you, uh, then it's easy as a leader. You know, your, your job is relatively simple. Uh, and both Ken and Chris uh, were on my senior management group inside the inspectorate. So I pride myself that uh, I got good people, the right people in those jobs, and it made my job a piece of cake, you know, dead easy to, to do it with people like that who are, who are working with you. Um, Chris will be known to almost everyone in this room, I'm sure, um, uh, our foremost expert in primary uh, education in Scotland has been uh, for many years, uh, was, a, was a head teacher, was an inspector, was a chief inspector, uh, but above all else, um, was and is uh, an inspiration. Chris.